Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here. And in this episode of Zigmaster, we're going to be talking about uh, the concept of the process virtual address space. So let's get started. When your program is running, it's, it's, it's known as a process by the operating system. And it has a view of, of the memory in the system as if uh, the entire memory was available to your process. And this, is, this isn't really true because you have the operating system and other processes that are sharing that same memory. And this is why uh, this view of the memory that the process has is known as a virtual address space because it isn't the real uh, view of the physical memory. There's going to be some mapping between uh, the addresses that your process sees and the actual physical memory addresses um, being accessed. But in terms of us as programmers, we usually uh, don't have to worry about all, all those um, details of the mappings to the actual physical memory. All we have to know is that our process is going to have this view of a uh, uh, memory space uh, starting out at, at, a, at some address. Let's, let's call it address zero, going all the way up to the, the, the maximum addressable um, memory address. Okay, and uh, that that memory uh, virtual address space that, that the process sees is going to be broken up into several uh, blocks, as we're going to call them here. You may see different names for for this. You may see them called regions or sections or uh, segments. We're, we're going to call them blocks here. And there's a block that I'm not showing here, which holds your the actual code that's going to be executed by the processor, um, the, the code produced by the compiler. It's put in a, in a section, which is usually going to be right at the bottom, right at the beginning of the memory virtual address space. Um, I'm not showing it here because we're not going to be um, um, dealing or, or interacting with that uh, memory region directly as programmers. Uh, we will be interacting with these three um, blocks that we're seeing here and starting out right after that code um, block we're going to have this block here that's labeled static and uh, this is where we're going to be storing our constants and our variables at the container level uh, or also known as, as global uh, variables. Um, these are said to have a uh, static lifetime, which means that they're available for the entire lifetime of your process, uh, from the beginning when it starts executing up to when the process exits, okay? Next, right after that, we're going to have the heap area. And in the heap is where we're going to be um, interacting in terms of allocating what's known as dynamic memory. Um, we will be in Zig uh, interacting with the heap uh, by means of allocators. And this is one of the distinctive features of Zig where um, any type of allocation in the heap has to be done explicitly via an allocator. Okay, So, so those allocations are going to be occurring in this memory block um, area known as the heap. And as you can see here, um, I have this arrow here that indicates when we allocate on the heap, uh, we do so in uh, following the increasing uh, addresses. Okay, so so um, you will be seeing that um, subsequent allocations will have addresses with increasing numbers. Okay, and uh, finally we have what's known as the stack. And that uh, memory block is used for the memory that's going to be required by functions. Okay, every time we make a, a function call, uh, the local variables and the, the, the parameters of that function, which are like uh, local variables for the function, they're going to be placed in this area known as the stack. And it's called a stack because the behavior of this area is going to be uh, as a stack where you place um, you place things on the stack. They'll, they'll be at the top. And when you need uh, something from the stack, which is known as popping from the stack, uh, you're going to be using that item that, that was just placed at the top. And when I say items, I'm not talking about... Um, 
our, our variables directly, what's going to be uh, pushed and popped from this stack is uh, actually the what's known as the frames of the functions, the function frame, which is basically that structure that has all of those local variables and parameters of the function. Okay. Let's look at uh, what's known in Zig as container levels, or in other languages, they're considered global variables and constants. When um, we define here, as we're doing, as you can see here, we have this const C declaration here. Uh, it's a U8 and assigning the value 42. Or we have this var V, also U8, assigning the value 13. And um, Let's imagine that, that these declarations are at the container level. Um, they're not within any function in our program. Well, what's going to happen is they are going to be um, allocated and bound to this uh, static uh, block area of memory. Okay, So the allocation for the required space is going to be made in that static area. And in the case of the variable, we have it here. It's only one byte. It's a U8. And we have the value 13. In the case of the constant, it's also one byte and the value 42. Um, these these uh, values are going, are, are going to be uh, available for the entirety of the, the, the running program and, and thus the static uh, nature of this area of memory. Um, this is space that can be uh, allocated by the compiler um, and uh, these these values assigned directly in the, the compiled binary executable, okay? Because they're the values, if, if they're they, they are values known at, at compile time, they can be placed right there in the executable. Um, in the case of the variable, we could define it as undefined, and in that case, only the space would be allocated and no value would be written um, in the in the actual binary. But um, that's basically the, the, the behavior of these types of declarations at the container level. Next up, we're going to be seeing at the function level, these are, these are what are known as local variables. In this case, we have here a var v u8 once again. But this time, it's inside this function f. And the function also has here two parameters, a and b, both of type u8. So when we actually call, let's say that we call this function, passing in the, the arguments 1 and 2, this is what's going to happen. We're going to have that uh, on the stack block area. Um, there's going to be space allocated for those um, parameters, uh, given their type here. That's only one byte for each. And also any local variables, that space will be allocated there also. And this is what's, what's known, as I mentioned, this is what's known as the function uh, stack frame specifying on the stack uh, that data structure that represents the, the environment of the function while um, it's executing, okay? And it's important to note that once the function returns, um, this uh, function stack frame is going to be popped off the stack and removed and that area is considered uh, uninitialized memory okay so basically something like this um, the reality is that when the the function stack frame is popped um, not necessarily the the values that were stored here in the memory are going to be they're not going to be right wiped out so uh, that, that could be cause for some interesting situations that, that could be confusing in terms of uh, dealing with pointers to stack memory. And we're going to be seeing that uh, in detail in, in later episodes of the series. But it's important to note that uh, the, the behavior is that once the function returns, that stack frame is removed from the stack and that memory is no longer considered valid. It's it's. It's as if it, we were dealing with uninitialized memory, okay? Next up, we're going to see the case of constants, okay? And this is a really interesting because constants are always going to be placed in the static block area. Um, no matter, even if they're inside a function, 
they're still going to be placed in that area. And this is one of the reasons why uh, Zig, uh, and specifically in the latest version, if you have a variable that's never mutated, it's going to be a compile error, and it's going to tell you that this should be a constant. And uh, that allows the compiler to do this type of optimization. Okay, We're going to see that constants, be, be them at the global container level or the function, the local level, they're going to be placed in this uh, static area because uh, we know that given that they're a constant, they're never going to change. That's one thing. And another thing that the compiler can do is that if we have constants that have the same value, let's say that in this case we have this constant here, the value is 13, any other place in our program where we define a constant that's a U8 and has the value 13, it's just going to refer to this area of the static memory. Okay, so it's uh, like a deduplication of these values. You don't have to store them. If they're the same value, we know they're not going to change. So we can make this optimization in terms of reducing memory, uh, memory space. Okay, so that's one of the benefits of using constants when you're not going to be uh, ever mutating uh, a variable. Here, once again, we see uh, that in the case of our function, we have the function frame here. And uh, in terms of memory space allocation, we only have the two uh, function parameters, okay, um, with their corresponding values uh, when we make the function call. And the, the, the actual allocation for the constant is happening over here in the static area, the static block. But in terms of what's known as function scope and the identifiers that are available in the scope, this C identifier is going to be available within that function scope. So it's, it's important to note that uh, here in terms of memory allocation, the stack frame, we're not seeing the C here inside the stack frame. We're, we're seeing it over, over here. But in terms of the scope of the function while it's executing, that identifier, that C identifier, that binding is going to be available inside that sc the scope of that function. Okay. Next up, we're going to be seeing the actual case of heap allocation. And uh, we haven't touched on this. Uh, we're going to be seeing this further down in the series. But in Zig, every time we, we're going to make uh, a heap allocation, we're going to be doing so by using an allocator as we see here um, in this case we're using the create method and passing in the type u8 which will allocate one byte this is used create is used when we are allocating just one item if we're going to be allocating more than one item uh, we use the alloc method which we'll see later on in the series but for now, let's just say that we want to allocate one byte. We use create here. We have to use try because this this uh, this process this process can fail. The process of allocation can fail if there isn't any memory available. And what we receive in return from this call is a pointer that's designated here by this asterisk or the star, a pointer to a U8, a pointer to a byte. Okay, and we're making this a constant uh, with the identifier. PTR or pointer. Um, and what happens is, since it's a constant, it'll be allocated here on the static area with this uh, the binding PTR. The type is a pointer to a U8. And what's actually stored in this static area isn't the value, or in this case, we don't have a value because we're just allocating. Um, the value that's going to be stored is actually the memory address of the heap memory that has been allocated. So we allocate one byte because that's what we requested here on the heap. It's going to be happening here at the beginning, at the first space where it's available and, and we have enough space for the allocation. In this case, uh, we have this address here. And as you can see, the actual uh, value stored here in this binding over here in the static area is that memory address of the space allocated in the heap. Okay, so this is what happens when we do this. If it weren't a const and it was a var, depending if it was at the container level, it would also be here in the static area. Or if it was in a, in a function at the local level, 
then uh, this uh, binding here and the storage of the address would be inside of the function stack frame. Okay. And uh, that would be it for this one. Um, I wanted to cover these uh, concepts of the process virtual address space because when we start talking about pointers and um, heap allocation and things like that, uh, also uh, the, the issue of uh, referencing or creating pointers to memory on the stack, things like that, this knowledge of these memory blocks uh, and the view that the process has of memory is really important, okay? So I hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.